according to a report by The Athletic, his completely inappropriate behavior towards female reporters, five of them who are quoted anonymously in the story. He sent them shirtless pictures asking for nude photos in return, hounded them for them for photos. He sent creepy, invasive messages, he, telling them he'd share info about the team if they got drunk with him, basically using his power to try and manipulate these reporters and putting these women on the defensive, making them uncomfortable at work and making it harder, maybe impossible for them to do their jobs. And this should be a huge problem for Mickey Calloway. He's shown that he can't handle these this kind of power, that, that he really can't handle this job. This shows a pattern of behavior where Mickey Calloway has been actively working to make women feel marginalized. And here we are again. It's really just been two weeks, really most two weeks to the day when the Jared Porter news broke. So we find ourselves with some very similar themes here. And one of the themes beyond Callaway, you know, being inappropriate, beyond Jared Porter being inappropriate, is really how broken the hiring process is in Major League Baseball. And there are clearly, clearly, gaps here in the vetting process that need to be filled. And I'm glad to see the statement from Sandy Alderson where he said, because he did hire Mickey Calloway, did hire Jared Porter, where he said they need to go back through their vetting process and they need to figure out what they got wrong. Because the thing about Calloway is that you had and he had a bad reputation. And according to one of the women in the story who's quoted said, you know, in her opinion, that just a little bit of digging here would have revealed who Calloway really was and that he had an issue dealing with female reporters and being inappropriate. And, you know, Sandy admitted the first uh, with Jared Porter that he didn't speak to any women who may have worked with Jared Porter. And I'd be curious to get his answer if we asked him the same question this time around. And I think what it goes to show is that the hiring process and the vetting process, you know, needs to be expanded. Like more people need to be asked about the character of the people you're hiring, most in these really public front facing positions where you are representing the organization and where you have this sort of power imbalance over reporters, male and female, but obviously he was targeting the female reporters. So yeah, I, I think mean, it's, it's fair to, to question Sandy's process, and Sandy himself is now going to be questioning the process, and hopefully this leads to actual changes. Well, right, and, and that's the point, right? That's the point. You want to see the, the change across Major League Baseball and the hiring practices. I, you know, we There's no accusations being levied at Sandy Alderson that he knew when he hired two individuals nonetheless. I mean, obviously he did not know about Jared Porter, and he did not know about Mickey Calloway. The question is, should he have known? We've mentioned it a couple of times that you and I individually have been reached out by a couple executives that work outside of Major League Baseball uh, that run very, very successful businesses uh, that have told us, listen, he should have known. The Mets should have known. Uh, The digging that we do when we hire executives um, is far-reaching. We find out every single thing before we hire executives. And that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about it in one instance, a general manager, and the other instance, a manager. So if you have executives, and Maggie and I don't run a business, I don't run a business, you and I host a radio show and do it on the fan 10 to 2 Monday through Friday right here on WFAN. But when you have executives reach out uh, and tell us individually, listen, the excuse of them saying, well, we, we, we didn't know. Well, the question is, well, why didn't you know? And then you get to the hiring practices that are going on around Major League Baseball. Outside of the fact that there aren't enough women in positions of power around Major League Baseball, that's why the hiring of Kim Eng with the Marlins and Derek Jeter is is such a monumental hire uh, and a shift that there needs to be more female executives around the sport. But 
There also needs to be a bigger, a better vetting process when you're bringing individuals in, um, you know, and it can't be this quote unquote, you know, uh, you know, a good old boys network um, where everyone's great. Everyone's rosy. And, you know, I'm not, you know, uh, sight unseen. I'm not going to dig into anybody's past because in essence, that's what they didn't dig into Jared Porter's past. And they did not dig into Mickey Calloway's past. And they found out something about Mickey Calloway 10 months after, according to the athletic, the Mets yeah. did as an organization. 10 months after he was already in place as manager, uh, they did a little uh, internal investigation, uh, could not substantiate the stuff, and he remained as as manager here of the Mets. But as the 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 piece in the athletic is alarming i mean it just is the photographs yeah. everything the you know let's uh to one female reporter on name female reporter let's get drunk and i'll tell you everything you need to know about the mets i mean sending photos of him you know naked in bed shirtless in bed i mean what do i mean uh, it, it's it's alarming behavior by a man that continued and let's be honest he also right after he was let go of the mets as manager he was hired as pitching coach with the angels yeah i mean and I'm, so i'm curious I mean, about that the and job's continued here for Mickey Calloway. Yeah, and and I think that's where, you know, especially with, you know, stories like these, it's like how, you know, if these reputations are there or if there is something in his past that the Mets found out about, granted it was before he was with the Mets, but it was something, then what happens then? Right, because a lot of times when women, you know, either don't come forward, or a lot of times I've heard this question asked, like, why didn't any of the reporters who were feeling harassed by Callaway or feel like he was way overstepping the line, why didn't they go to the Mets, right? Why didn't they go and bring this to their attention? Well, we've talked before with Jared Porter about this sort of calculation you have to make about your career. A lot of times you're hoping that if you don't engage, that it will just go away, that you're, you know, because you're, you still have to do your job, and this is the manager of the baseball team. And other times, you worry that if you do take it to the Mets, or if you did take it to the uh, Cleveland, you know, their baseball team, or if you did take it to the Angels, whatever, that it gets swept under the rug, that you end up getting retribution over it. You could get blackballed. You can get, you know, uh, like you'll get side-eyed. People will freeze you out. You know, you'll have this bad relationship now with a lot more people on the team. If you try to go that route, it can get completely dismissed. You won't be believed. All of that stuff has happened to women, so that's why it's so hard for them to come forward. However, you talk about, and remember when Michael Lombardi came on with us, and he's a former NFL general manager, and we yeah. talked about search firms, right? And we talked about outside people you can bring in if you are hiring in these huge positions, right, manager of the baseball team, general manager of the baseball team, these massive positions there, these people are the face of your franchise, are you employing, maybe this shouldn't be Sandy's specific job to be calling around and saying, hey, our manager is going to be interacting with reporters, and this is a huge bulk of what he is responsible to do. The manager talks to reporters before the game, after the game. They can have you know, text relationships or phone calls. It's a really big part of the job is dealing with reporters. Maybe we should see how this guy has dealt with reporters in the previous stops he was at. And when we do that, maybe we should talk to some women when we go do that. Now, I don't know if they did. It seemed kind of clear that they didn't. But you can employ these kind of firms that can go and do the digging for you. I'm not saying Sandy has to call every reporter in Cleveland. But you can have – you can you – can, find a way to get information on somebody if you want to and right. i don't know is, if do the want mets to? wanted to right right that's the that's the that's the million dollar question do you want to right do you want to do you feel like it's a need a necessity to do that type of digging as an organization and i think with the the latest two storylines uh with porter and callaway I think it's going to bring about systemic change across Major League Baseball where some organizations probably didn't do or have not. And we know with the Mets, they did not do their due diligence, Maggie. That is that is now going to change. And let me just say one, you know, one other thing in terms of this coming back on Sandy Alderson, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, you were on and you did a fantastic job this morning on with uh, Boomer Geo and Al Dukes and, uh, and going I back and forth with Al. I just, it needs to be said because you did. You did an incredible job and you should be proud of you. I mean, it's just, you don't need me saying it, but you did an incredible job. Here's the thing, you know, if you want to criticize Sandy Alderson, I know this for a fact. I know for a fact that Steve Cohen was rip-roaring mad at Sandy Alderson after the Jared Porter signing um, and after that story came out. So I was told that. 
I was told that by somebody that would know, trust me, that would know. So if you want to come out and say that, well, this has nothing to do with Sandy Alderson, nonsense. Nonsense, because the owner of the team is looking at Sandy Alderson. It takes nothing away. Sandy did nothing wrong. He was not sending photos, and he was not harassing women. But the point being is he is in the position of power of bringing people in within the organization that he is in the position as president of business and baseball operations for the Mets, where Steve Cohen held him accountable for bringing an individual within the organization. And then this story came out from ESPN. So it does fall on Sandy Alderson. Not that he did anything wrong with with harassing women. That's not the story. The story is he's in a position to bring individuals of integrity within the Mets organization, and the owner was rip-roaring mad that Jared Porter was brought into the organization and that Sandy Alderson did not know, and the Mets as an organization did not know that uh, Jared Porter had this in his past. So the, if the owner was ticked off, that all, that's all you need to know about the responsibility when you look at Sandy Alderson that is on his shoulders. And then you bring in this story with Mickey Calloway. And it's easy to say, well, the hiring practices of the Mets, and I'm not. it's not just the Mets holy. These are just two latest examples, and both as a general manager and as a, a fired manager in the past, of where the Mets did not do the necessary vetting on both individuals, and both of these stories come back to the organization. And I think it's just asking, what can we do to change it? Like, everyone is acknowledging, and rightfully so, that this is Mickey Calloway's indiscretions here. He is the bad guy who was putting these women in a terrible position. But just because he's the bad guy who's doing that and he should be punished or whatever the Angels are going to do with him, and I, I, I have no idea. But to ask now what can we do to make sure this doesn't slip through the cracks again, that's an absolutely fair question to ask. And it's one that Sandy, I think, should want to be now at the forefront of trying to answer because now he's gotten sort of had to answer these questions twice in the span of two weeks. So asking what can we do to make this better, that's always something I'd want to know. I mean, there's a couple more things I'd want to know here, too. So unfortunately, we know that Sandy had to step away from the team because he has uh, cancer treatments in June of 2018. In August of 2018, it was brought to the Mets' attention that, that Mickey Calloway had something in his past. They handled it internally. What happened then? Like, what were the next steps then? So Sandy's not with the team. But what are the next steps then? Did that prompt anyone in the organization to start maybe trying to uncover and look under some rocks and maybe start talking to people? And maybe they would have caught what was happening currently with the Mets, with these three reporters who said that he was being inappropriate. Maybe they would have caught that. And then maybe he doesn't get hired by the Angels and hopefully not doing it to somebody who's out in Southern California. The other question I have is about, and I don't know if there's like a legal issue here or something, I I honestly don't know. But if the Mets knew that Mickey had something in his past and they were made aware of it while he was the manager of the Mets, can they say to the Angels, like, hey, we had an issue, I'm just letting you know what we had an issue. Now, legally, I'm not sure if there's any ram, if you can't say something like that or if you can't tip somebody off. I don't know, but that would also be another well, pro- be to- another flaw. Like I don't know if there are HR things and confidentialities. I have no idea. Where would the Mets be able then if the Angels called and say, okay, it obviously didn't end well with Mickey Callaway. Like, can you give us some indication of what kind of manager he was and give us the full scope? And if the Mets would say then, it was awful. Well, we well we all saw that baseball wise, but in terms of like terrible, if they you know. Knew a little if they knew more, which they well, did. Could they have given a, a or could they or give show? the angels a head up so that he's yeah. not being hired over and over and over? Well, again. I mean, it's it's a great question, Maggie. I I have no I have no idea if that phone call was made, uh, if it was reached out, if the angels called the Mets, or if this was just a case of, you know, Madden who was brought in as manager, you know, uh, has uh, you know, and you heard nothing of of this about Callaway. I mean, I didn't. I mean, and. I, you know, but I'm not covering the team, and I'm not a female reporter, so uh, I, I'm just talking about the fact of I didn't I didn't hear any of of any of this going on. But I don't know if there would be any kind of legal ramifications if the Mets reach out to the Angels and said, "Hey, by the way, we investigated Mickey ten months ago into right. an allegation we heard of something that happened when uh, he was with Cleveland." I, I mean, I I don't know if they. I, or and that prompted gonna... us to do some digging of our own. Right, I mean that's right, and and right. how much I mean, but here's the deal: how much digging did the Mets do at the time? I don't know. I, I mean, know. how many people did they call? 
Did they call, you know, when they when they heard these allegations against Mickey Calloway, did they uh, call other reporters on the beat? Did they call other female reporters in other towns? Did they, you know, did they do a cursory vet or did they really dig deep? If they really dug deep, then I'd be questioning about exactly who was leading that investigation because uh, according to the, the Athletic and the allegations that are levied against Calloway and they have text messages and everything like yeah. that, Maggie, where... You know, for for female reco- uh, female reporters in Major League Baseball, this was not something that you had to dig all that deep in order to find out about the reputation of Mickey Calloway and how he treated female reporters, which was disgusting. 